The early stages of productions on the famous computer animated film Toy Story were a complete nightmare. The production was in some sort of development hell into the Black Friday incident. Disney harassed the then new animation studio Pixar constantly. There were to produce and re-release the film, and they wanted results as quickly as possible. Disney tried everything to eliminate Pixar's efforts to deviate from the Disney formula, even at times threatening to shut down the production down. Disney sent notes on the revisions that they thought would improve the film. They insisted their notes, which all read, Edge. The film needs more edge. The people working on the film at the time struggled so hard to so hard to maintain all of Disney's notes and demands. Once a week, they were required to fly across the country to the Disney offices to present, present them with progress. Every time they, met, they were meant with the same response. Edge. The film needs more edge. Pixar revised the film so hard to meet the deadlines that it resulted in some rather interesting changes. In order to achieve Edge, the film became quite a lot darker. Woody became a wildly unlikable character, much more angry and far less comedic than in the final film. Bo Peep's role in the story was far more prevalent, often flirtious towards the male characters, and is the first to accuse Woody of push, pushing Buzz out of the window, Buzz Lightyear was referred to at this point in production as Lunar Larry. He's highly reminiscent of an old superhero, talking in a deeper voice and is even more deluded and ignorant of his surroundings. The other toys were relevantly unchanged, save for the minor aesthetic differences. Pixar employees would work literally 24-7 nonstop. Director John Lasseter joked on in more than one occasion that he had the best parking space at the office because his car hadn't moved out for over three days. Some of the writers and storyboards, storyboard artists began to suffer chronic amnesia. A few writers reported seeing visions of Buzz and Woody taunting on them and the lack of pro progress chanting, Edge. The film needs more edge. Many of the Intel writers quit due to the stress it was putting on their personal lives. Much to the distress, distress of the remaining crew, by November of 1992, there were two, two of the five writers left. And only one of the three storyboard artists. The remaining storyboard artist named, was named Ralph Thompson. He joined Pixar team in the winter of 1987. Working on short films such as Tin Toy and Knick Knack. He, at the same time, did some storyboard work for The Nightmare Before Christmas with fellow John, artist John Joe Raft Rant. Joe came down with a serious illness and he hadn't been working in a week. Ralph cons worked consistently in fear of the inevitable correction by Disney. More edge, more edge. Each presentation meant another row of sleepless nights of writing and redrawing of the same character in the same bedroom over and over and over. It was maddening. One morning, John Lester, Andrew Stanton, and other higher-ups at Pixar came to office and told everyone what happened at their last meeting. Disney felt that things were not looking very good and demanded that in less than a week they would see the complete film and story reels, storyboards, and with audios with massive revisions. There was a general groan and whining from the crew, and they went back to working. Ralph worked harder than all the others involved. Sometimes at two in the morning, one of the writers would work, would walk into Ralph's office with a packet of newly written scenes, more to draw, and with more drawings that meant more scratch voice work when a film is still in writing Storyboarding stages, artists will do temporary voices for the story reels. He had Disney's vague instructions racing through its mind. More, more edge, edgier, more. We want results from the people, edgier. This is a business, faster, more edge. Come, move on, already. This is what he, this, he thought to himself, this exactly, the film needed an edge. Need to be darker, more cynical, and need more adult humor. 
and situations and needed an attitude. Of course, Ralph, you goddamn retard. How couldn't you see it sooner, Edge? All those hours of bent, hours bent over a desk, and all you needed was Edge. Why didn't you listen sooner? He gave the film an edge. Story reels were flown over the main crew to the head offices at Disney's. The date was November 27th, 1993, Black Friday, when the film was brought to the Disney screening room. The reel was about 48 and a half minutes long. The movie started out as a western-style shoot shootout between Woody and Andy, resulting in Andy shotting, being shot down. It's revealed that this was just a game played inside of Andy's mind. The film continued on with little problems for about the first 20, first 20 minutes or so. Through several gags, seems off the overall tone. For example, Mr. Potato Head would have pulled one of his eyes out and kicked them under Bo Peep's dress for his look-see. There were several scenes of Buddy yelling at the toys to stop caring about Buzz, Larry, and pay attention to him, accumulating in insults or minor acts of violence. The scene comes where Andy t can only take one toy to Pizza Planet, and Woody push Buzz out of the window. Woody offers to shake hands with Buzz, Larry, only to get him out of the window. There is a stock smashing noise. The other toys are shocked and antagonized for Woody for what he has done. Woody shows a little remorse and screams at Slinky Dog to make this toy stop harassing him. After much yelling, with one of the Green Army men saying the word goddamn, the toys grab Woody and toss him out of the window as he woof it woof as well. He falls onto the ground with a low thump. Sharing is heard from the interior of the house. The quality on the story bones become much less refined, as almost like chicken scratch. So Woody gets up and sees Buzz Larry. Buzz's body was shattered on impact. His arms and legs were broken off and only a few inches away. There was a large crack on down the middle of the chest, revealing a mess of the button and wires inside. He gave off a sort of an electrical twitch motion on his head. His eyes looked as they were about to pop out of their plastic sockets. The twitching stops after a few moments as Woody looked in fear as what he has done to Buzz and runs off. There's a jump cut to the scene where the two get stuck in a claw machine. The storyboard art is back to its normal level of quality. The machine is filled with sunglasses wearing pizzas as opposed to the aliens were in the finished movie. Buzz is completely unharmed and intact. The scene is almost a ver verbatim to the final film. Said the antagonist in control of the claw was wearing a yellow t-shirt and was smoking three cigarettes at it once. The claw grabs Woody and Buzz, or Larry, and putting them in his clutches of Sid. There's another jump cut. Once returning to the chicken scratch style of artwork, the scene is inside of Sid's room. Woody looks around in the room of fear. He tiptoes around the room and collapses after seeing one of Sid's mutant toys. The reel then jumps cut, so cut once again to unrelated test animation of the characters running. A few seconds of Buzz Larry running into place. A few seconds of Woody running and nearly a minute of the two running together. The footage appeared distorted in the Spanish text were, that was present on the screen. It looked like clay models that got life. There now comes a shot of, completely, of a completely naked Woody with automatically correct features. Standing in front of the black background in the trademark Pixar ball is rolling around in the distance. The animation now was in the traditional animation style of a two, typical 2D Disney film. Woody stares directly into the camera while his flesh begins to rot away with the ex exceptions of his eyes, which, means, which, remain intact, which remain intact. Woody begins to moan in a low voice. What remains of, the, what remains of his lips curl into a smile. 
bits of flesh peeling off as this happens. He lifts up his decomposing arm manually and waves into the camera. His fingers digging to his eyes. Dark blood oozes out of the their sockets. Witty begins to scream and growl. Don't you want it? Don't you want it? Don't you love it? He digs so deep as to rip the entire half of his head off. Woody gives a sigh of relief and begins to eating his flesh off the skull before tossing it aside. He writes the word edge on the screen with his rotting fingertips. The remaining 15 minutes of the real word were pencil scribbles accompanied by the shrill screams of a young woman. The word edge was burned into the projection screen. The screening ended in a complete silence. Chairman of Disney at that time, Jeffrey Katzenberg, walked out of the screen quietly telling his colleagues notes. They were following all of the notes we were giving them. Once, upon returning to the to Pixar office, writer Pete Doctor found the body of Ralph Thompson in an enormous pile of paper in his office. Further analysis of his cause of his death was a heart attack by the lack of sleep and stress. The papers were all st- storyboards and the animation styles of the final coherent scene of Woody while the word edge was scrawled back of each one the following black following the black friday screening disney became far less involved with the film which which pixar was finally given the freedom to make their film their way the film went on to be a huge success with critics at the box office the black friday incident still remains very much of a mystery. 